look back through my life experiences, I can look back on many situations where it's evident that if people do not take care of themselves and if they do not achieve a balance, that it generally really negatively affects their quality of life and it also affects the people around them. To me, mental wellness means being aware of yourself, knowing what your triggers are, knowing what helps you be the best person that you can be, oh being aware of your past and life experiences. I think that mental wellness is someone who is very aware of themselves and how they feel in certain situations and they're able to avoid things that are unhealthy for them. Um, I didn't think about that. That's a hard one. Uh, <laughs> mental wellness to me means having a, a balance in your life that allows you to function uh, optimally in everything that you do. I think it's something serious and that we shouldn't take lightly and we should be talking about it way more. I feel like it should be stressed more and I feel like millennials are more stressed than a lot of people in the past. Um, mental wellness to me is uh, extremely important. Um, I mean I have a, uh, you know growing up I had a really hard childhood. Um, and, and, you know, since then, life hasn't been very easy. So, you know, mental wellness is something that I've had to really pay attention to. It's very important to me because I struggle with it a lot. I have really bad depression, anxiety, and stress levels, so it's really important to me. Mental wellness means it's very important to me and I think it should be important to everyone else. It's more than just sort of like one small part of your life. It's sort of like your whole life. It affects your whole life and means that, you know, it's like a really significant part of you. You should take care of it like you take care of the rest of you. Mental illness means taking time to take care of yourself and taking time to um, think about your careness, I mean your mental being, when um, something bad happens. I think that in some ways it has broadcasted more, it's, it's made it a lot more of an issue that people discuss. I also think that it um, has become a platform for people that are seeking um, to fill a need or a hole. And they probably could better seek that and actually have real relationships um, on the negative, right? So positively, it brings awareness. Negatively, um, I think sometimes it's just an attention seeker. And I wonder if it keeps the people that actually need help from getting help. I, I think social media can be bad or good for somebody. Like, for me, it's... Uh, talk to all my friends who live in other states or far away and it can be bad because a lot of negative things come to social media especially because it's not like face to face it's not like someone's it's like someone's true feelings but they just can't show it so it can be bad and good so it affects it in a good and bad way because social media can be um, a way for you to better your mental illness, but it also can be a way to bring your mental illness down by other people who flaunt like their success and you could like sometimes become jealous of that. As much as we um, try to deny it and say that we don't, we really do. But, yeah. <laughs>Depends on your personality and the kinds of things that you struggle with. If you're the kind of person that struggles with comparing themselves to other people, then I think social media can be really detrimental because people are showing you the best that is happening in their life. They're not usually complaining, they're usually showing you how cool they are. And so it's easy for you to feel like your life is not good enough if, you, if that is your tendency. But for me, for example, what I use social media for is to stay in contact with the people that I love. My family who lives in another country, my friends from all over the world. And so to me, social media is a fantastic
fantastic opportunity for connection and that's what I use it for. So, so social media can be whatever you make of it. That's my answer. A lot of people on Instagram post pictures of them being happier, them being in a happy relationship, but they don't really know what's behind it, you know? So it's like, it's just a front, I guess, of what people, you want people to think of you and you want people to see. So I feel like that affects it a lot because you think everyone has a good life and you don't, but it's, you know, everyone's struggling somehow. I would love to say no. You know, I would love to say that I'm awesome human being that's above social media and doesn't let it affect me but in reality you know we're all human we're social beings um, I don't think I rely on social media to make me feel better about myself but you know if I post a picture on you know Instagram and it gets a certain amount of likes or you know you know a friend posts a picture where I think I look good in and you know a lot of people comment and say oh yeah you look good things like that you know it, it does build you up um, you know, I wouldn't say I, I rely on it, but I can say that it, get, it definitely um, has an effect on me. Um, yeah. I don't rely on social media to make myself feel better or to, uh, for my mental wellness. Uh, what I do think about social media, I'd be lying if I said when I posted something and someone liked it, when it doesn't get a, when it gets a positive response, I'd be lying if I said it didn't make me feel good. Uh, but I don't rely on it to be kind of my primary way of viewing my self worth. Are you all my personal dream? I think social media affects mental wellness because everyone is on social media these days and. People are posting negative and positive things on social media, but sometimes it is negative, and sometimes that negative can affect someone's like mental wellness and their thought of being. And I think people should just stay positive on social media rather than negative. I grew up in a family where there was a lot of bipolar, and they refused to medicate themselves. So living in an environment like that was very, very difficult. And um, I. I think through most of my early adulthood, it was my biggest fear that I would do that to my children. And I used to ask my doctor every year if I had it yet, because I wanted to make sure to medicate myself. So how does it play a role? Um, it, I guess it gave me a drive to provide a better life for my family and to make sure that if I ever needed assistance that I would seek it out rather than to allow those around me that I love to suffer. Um, in every way. Because um, if you have a family life that is negative and um, somehow abusive or in, in any way does not provide the support that we all need from the people closest to us, then, then it is going to affect your mental health and, uh, in a negative way. And if you, on the other side, on the other hand, have the support that you need, the um, people who love you and accept you for who you are and will be behind you no matter what, then it's going to affect you very positively. So it depends. Everything is a balance. <laughs> um, I think family, if you do not have a good connection or just relationship with your family, it does really affect how you feel because family is someone you can always go to and when you feel like you can't go to them for something, then you kind of feel lost and you don't like have anyone to go to. And I feel like that would affect someone's mental wellness. It's not mine though, because my relationship with my family is pretty great, but I can see and I've seen other family relationships that have just not been good and they feel like they don't have anyone to go to. These mental issues, they didn't see it as a problem because it wasn't a problem for them. and. It was something small to them, and it was something that if you can't see it, then it's not a problem type thing. But over the years, they started understanding more because they saw how bad it was. But it had to get to the point where I ended up in the hospital for them to care about me. But now it's like, they understand now, and like they're, they're way more open-minded. 
but we had a, it took years, it took a lot of years to get to where we are. So now they're really supportive, they're really understanding. They try a lot, like they try a lot, and I'm really, I'm really blessed to have them. Well, I think that there are a lot of factors to consider there. Um, family backgrounds make a difference. Um, support from you my both your family and your friends. Um, whether you are a person who tends to fit in or doesn't fit in, um, people who are different certainly have a hard time with their um, mental wellness in school because they tend to be ostracized. The, the point is, if you naturally fit in, um, you'll have an easier time. If you don't naturally fit in, you gotta pay for it. <laughs> I feel like school is a big factor on some people's, and especially mine, mental wellness because school is so stressful sometimes and it can put a lot on your plate at once and you do not know how to handle it sometimes and you just stress out and you feel like you don't have anywhere to go because you have to do it. You have to do school. You have to get the work done and I think having friends and family and teachers that you were close to go like talk to them like if you can't keep up with the work or you're not going to be able to get stuff done on time you would go to them and I feel like that would help a lot. It's one of those things that you often don't realize until you are away from the situation. But if I look back to circumstances and people that I went to school with, you would learn later, like, wow, I really thought that person was just mean. And why did they think that they were so amazing and awesome? And why are they awful to people? And then I learned about the home that they lived in and how there wasn't mental health there and how much they probably were struggling behind the scenes. And, and they acted that out in school, right? And so I think that if you would look at a lot of the kids that are struggling, I bet you would find a lot of that in their home. For me, when I was in school, I was never, like had huge groups of friends or, uh, but I always had a core group of like, you know, five people that I was really close with. So for me, my social circles in school helped my mental health just because it gave me people that were nearby that I could talk to, talk, uh, i say within those five, maybe I had two friends that I could really sit and talk about what was going on, how I was feeling. And I think having uh, friends outside of your family, outside of your, you know, kind of immediate people that you live with, to have friends that can listen to you and you can process with. Uh, for me in high school and college was huge. I it was essential for my mental health to have people that I could process life with. So that's how it looked for me with a small group of friends. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I think the people that are in my life right now um, have affected my outlook on life. Um, you know, I can think of, I'll use my wife as an example again. Um, when I met my wife, I was going through a real rough spot. This is, you know, 10 years ago or so. Um, and when I met her, she was just this, this great angel, this positive force for good in my life. And she has since helped direct my, my outlook on life into something a lot more positive. You know, I think of um, some coworkers that I have um, that on a daily basis, you know, we just have this banter back and forth and we joke. Everything you know um, in your mind. You know, that, that makes things positive. I think, um, I think, you know, my, my friends that I have, uh, they affect my outlook on life, but I think, one of the, I think one of the biggest ones for me, the biggest relationship that I have that affects my outlook on life is my son, he's two. Um, he's a little rascal, but um, it's hard to, <clears throat> it's hard to look at him and not be hopeless, not, <laughs> not be unhappy. Even when he does something that I'm upset with, you know, I have to, I have to smile and be happy, and that really helps my outlook on life because um, we live in such a world, a world where everything is just so negative at times, and it can be so easy to get down and depressed. And I think, you know, when I get sad, I think of my son. Oh, you think? Oh, I have the coolest kid in the world, um, and that helps. Yeah. Sweet. 
My family has played a very big role because my dad has always been a part of my life and has always been there for me. Even though I don't like telling him everything, he is always just there to listen and even puts a smile on my face or tells me a joke while I'm having a bad day. And I think he is just a good example for being positive all the time because I never see him down. And my sister is always making me laugh. Even though I don't see her a lot, she's constantly texting me and FaceTiming me and seeing how I am, and that really means a lot to me. It's okay not to be okay. It's okay not to be okay. It is okay not to be okay. It's okay not to be okay. It's okay to not be okay. It's okay to not be okay.